That's like Samoy. Anita, Yolanda. Oh, she said Yolanda. Oh, thank you so much, Yolanda. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's really cool. Let's see. Now, what's going on with my my deal here? Lynette, what's going on, girl? How you doing? Or if you've been in those roles and you're new to your company, one of the things that you have to make sure to ensure your success of you and your team is that you have the proper critical thinking skills and the proper advocacy and the proper mentor that more than likely your senior executives aren't going to provide you. Typically when you're promoted to leadership, they show you the office, they uh, show you the restroom, and then that's pretty much it. And they expect uh, today's report as of yesterday. Don't fall into that rut. You need to make sure that you have the proper advocacy, the proper support, and leverage our over 20 years of... Uh, that you, you'll be interested in. And we're going to network and have a good time. We're going to record the 50th episode. I'd love for everybody that's been on the show, if you're able to stop by, uh, stop by and, uh, and do so. And just uh, come have a good time at the lounge. It's going to be great food, great drinks, what time? and a great environment. 5.30. Yep, so 5.30 is when we're going to start. Uh, feel free to come by anytime that evening uh, as your schedule allows. And, man, let's have a good time, and we're going to enjoy the 50th episode, enjoy some good food, uh, talk a lot of noise, watch the NBA draft, <laughs> and uh, do what we do. Right. And so, again, uh, Thursday, June the 21st, put on your calendar, 5.30 p.m., 1299 Madison Avenue at Slice and Soul Pizza Lounge. I like the deal. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Listen, I've um, for the last few days I've been promoting this show. But thank you so much for joining the podcast. No, I'm humbled. It's always exciting when people want me on this show. I'm like, why do you, what do you want to hear from me? You know? Yeah, oh, so. oh we want to hear a whole lot today. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let, let me, let's jump right in. Okay. So, you know, for those that have been, you know, maybe been hiding under a rock or maybe they deactivated their Facebook page a long time ago or maybe they just don't, uh, you know, engage the way maybe they should. Okay. And maybe they're not familiar with you. Tell us who Shay Brown is. Well, I'm a lot of things. I'm a queen. I'm a communicator. You're an orator. You're a marketing specialist. And all these things I didn't think about. I was just thinking about, you know, that corporate rat race, climbing up, how much money I can make. I mean, the commissions were crazy. Right. You know, at the time, you know, I was in my mid to, to later 20s, you know, and making six figures. And who in the world wanted to leave that with no children, no husband? And, you know, he was yeah. like, this is not the life for you. He was like, I can tell you're just like me. And I said, what does that mean? He said, you're unemployable. You do just enough to keep from getting... I enjoy it, you know? And so yeah. since then, obviously, things have changed. I've grown the business, grown additional brands. Um, mm-hmm. Luxor Media, which I'll talk more about, and yeah. Fit Smart Life, which I'll also speak more about. Um, I've had a son since then. So my, my responsibilities and roles have changed as an of entrepreneur course. and, and what motivates me. Yeah, part of yeah. the evolution. So yeah. that's, that's a little bit about me and... Uh, you know, I'd like to still think I'm, uh, you know, I'm that I'm that young, fresh face, you know, naive, you naive girl, you know, that I once was because it keeps you humble, keeps you on your toes. But sometimes you just know what you know over the course of the years. And as it sounds, you really will. When you get tired of being devalued, underappreciated, underpaid, you know, underaccepted, you know. You will. You'll let go. And I think Les said it perfectly when he said, if you don't move on life, life will move on you and then you will be dragged. So either let go or be dragged. And that's where I got to a point. I got to a point where I just started doing the math. We all claim we're not mathematicians. We're not good at math. We're not good at science, except for when people owe us. So I got to the point where I was thinking, I started doing the math. I said, I haven't heard it. Put on your quota skirt. (laughs) And when I realized this is, he was always going to use me as that struggling monkey. You know, Uh that puppet, I started realizing there's never going to be an opportunity for advancement here. Mm -hmm. I'm running all your events. I'm running all your trade shows. I'm, you know, I'm dividing the leads. I'm the only one that really understands how to run these things properly. And the only one you can really count on and dependable enough to be fair, equitable, to show up, to set up, close down, break down, all those types of things. And I started thinking, 
why? If I was them, I wouldn't let me go either. I wouldn't let me promote either. Mm -hmm. And so then it started, it started making me bitter. Mm -hmm. And so I started hating the sight of going to the job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And I cherry pick and pocket all my leads until right before quota, you know, mm -hmm. like the last week. And then I'd shove them through. Shove them through and right. then he'd be like, I know you have properly, so I'm going to be sluggish. I'm going to cram coffee down all day. And I love coffee, like the right. next person. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to create work-life balance so that I can be, you know, in my best self when I'm working. I know me. So guess what? I'm afraid to let go, not because I can't do it, but because I will choose not to do it because right. I'm my own boss now. Yeah, because you won't, they, they won't invest in themselves. Yeah. Everything you just said is, they, I, they know themselves that they're not going to They know themselves. Right. And I had to they're get to that invest. point. I know myself. And that's why I knew myself and I knew if I didn't leave corporate America, I knew I was either going to catch a case <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the dog on truth. I was going to catch one. I'm telling you. I thank God for my first lady, right. sister Thompson, Opal Thompson. Well, I guess they sent you out in the quarter skirt. Yeah, she sent me out in the quarter skirt. Enough was... to be able to do it. Right. But the big thing was is that you were able to put a strategy in place right. to execute on it. Right. So, and you have to because if you go out there and flail it and think you're going to wing it just because you're talented, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I know many people who are who are more successful because they understand how to work how to operate within silos and ecosystems. Mm. It's a system. Right. If you do not have a system in place, you're going to fail because you won't know what to do with the first challenge that doesn't match up with your talent. Yeah, when the obstacle comes yeah. up. You when, don't I don't care how talented you are. I don't care how great of a salesperson you are. I don't care how great of a marketing person you are. I don't care how great of a financial expert you are. If you do not understand business operations mm -hmm. and how to work within that silos, you're dead. Right. Because what happens when that first client who's paying you $25,000 a month doesn't pay? What are you going to do? Yeah. So exactly. you have to have a contingency plan, but you have to put that in place. And when you put those business plans and those strategies and go-to-market strategies, is what we call it, in place, that's when you can account for the, if it doesn't work out, this is my next move. So that you're not stuck there, sitting there, beating your head against the wall. How am I going to pay mortgage? How am I going to pay rent? How am I going to pay my light bill? How am I going to pay the kids' daycare? You should have thought about that. I always just run me my money. Right. You know what I'm saying? Business, you're in business to follow your passion and to make money. Well, and that's what happens a lot of times in our community, in our nation, is that everybody wants to be the CEO of whatever right. crumb that Who they cares? have. Because they it has to be about them and it has to be about their idea Ego. Their this. Exactly. Ego, Ego shallowness, materialistic, that all those kind of things come into play. So when you say that, that really resonates because and some people say that and I always hate when people say that that it's a Memphis mentality. You've been you know, and lived in different places right, right. and things like that. You know, I certainly have. And, you know, that's a people thing. Yeah, it is. It's, it's not always just, a, you know, people that have only been in Memphis only have that as a reference yeah. point. But, you know, that's a people thing. Yeah, to, it is. To a various extent. It is. But, you know, I find that people... You know, they, they have to have this little small ownership. They, they have to have their own little pizza pie, mm -hmm. even though it's a, it's a pebble, instead of having one large slice, you That's know what it. I mean, and being a part of that. So, And you're right about the discipline piece, and I talk about this on the show all the time, Shay, is... Voice of reason to come from that background, to have that experience, but also to be able to implement that as part of a go-to-market strategy and to choose that retailer. Mm -hmm. Now, if I thought, and I operated under another PR firm because they didn't have anyone in their PR our firm who understood that demo yeah they hired me it could have been about me they they hired the company Reebok watches hired the PR firm and we worked together for several months on that project because of my experience and they made no bones to tell me about it but if you win a project you can handle it and you can scale accordingly because right. if you do not and everybody has the same um, has the same uh, skill sets it still leaves you in the same position yeah. you know so find people who are good at what they do and like my mom says put every ace in its place and then you mind your business you know right. and you, you manage it and like you manage people and you manage the expectations and that's what I've found has been so successful and I've done that over and over and over again. Sometimes yeah. I'm the lead PR right. agency. Sometimes I'm taking my cues from someone else. You know, and we've got our own, you know, partnership and, and contracts going on. And I tell them what I am and what I'm not going to do. And right. we hold our expectations based on, you know, what the scope of the work is. Exactly. But I'm never too good to think I'm that I can't join another marketing firm or or PR agency or or whomever or have someone come and help me because we're here to do a job for the client. Right. You know, and that's all that matters. I'm still my own boss. They don't tell me what to do. They don't tell me what hours to work. We put together deliverables, the scope of the work, expectations, benchmarks, and we work accordingly. Yeah. And then I still get to keep, you know, my success. But 
you're paying me. Now, if the client has a problem, they're going to come to you. You know what I'm saying? You just gave, what you just gave in about five minutes is probably several sessions that many consultants would give that charge whatever they yeah. charge for an hour. Now, I normally do. What you do. just gave. Now, I normally do, Ron. But right. for you. But for you. <laughs> for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, podcast. See, I just got some, some really good value right there. So, let's get into with, with your uh, particular brand, Shay. And, you know, you've mentioned three different brands. Okay. You know, talk about how they're interrelated. And then also, if you could, define for people, because y'all, y'all know here on the show, I'm big on definition. Um, define the what is public relations and how is it different from marketing and advertising? Because, you know, a lot of this, with the advent of social media that and the Internet, it's allowed people to get into business. Maybe Media, because we do everything from front of the house to the back of the house. Um, and... We also do sponsorship development, which a lot of companies don't do, but we understand how to bring brands on board and how to align them, you know, with events and or, you know, an influencer. Right. Um, And within that, um, we focus on leveraging um, different business modalities like social media marketing, uh, PR, and all of that, you know, to create awareness and exposure around those events. So mainly Luxor is events related, both online and offline. Then uh, Fit Smart Life is the arm that focuses specifically and only on health, wellness, uh, nutrition, sports. That's it. And, like, you know, tech as it relates to those other, those, you know. Your particular yeah, lanes. those particular yeah. lanes. Yeah. And um, within that, it's also an influencer agency. So the people that are on board are, you know, actual individuals. So they're pro athletes, nutritionists, dietitians, um, you know, health and wealth. The R and D is important. So now, if I'm thinking about Fit Smart Life, I'm only focusing on brands in this department, this right. age group, this audience, this location, this you know modality is all I need to focus on. If I'm focusing on Luxor Media, I'm focusing only on event spaces. So whether mm. it's the Oscars or the or the SVs or the Grammys, I know it's in people's mouth because it looks like you have no clue. You don't have a cohesive go to market strategy. You don't have a cohesive brand message. You don't have a cohesive team because that means you're pulling from engineers years over here and then next, and then tomorrow you have teenagers working so what's not to say that the that the narrative isn't getting confused maybe the teenager ends up with the the plan that you had put for the engineer to do together and now they're over here trying to work on your stuff because they know social media right that's just an ugly ugly business grow scale and you know what and sometimes we we the reason we can't grow is because we're afraid to dissect because guess what again that requires a different discipline right. what it's going to require for me to do royal king of pr it's been up for eight years is different than it's going to require for me to do for fit smart life so fit smart life it's either eat Mm-hmm. You know, you kill what you eat, you eat what you kill, or you starve. Right. So it's a little different because yeah. I'm asking the brands to come on versus the brands coming to me, under, you know, wanting to do PR. Right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is kind of understanding the difference in, in PR, marketing, advertising. Yeah. I'll put it like this. Advertising is, I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. <laughs> marketing is, I heard they were great. Right. PR is, she's great. So the difference is the whole scope. It's the overall. Yeah, it's the overarching building. umbrella. Yeah. It's the whole building. And then you've got advertising in one room. You've got digital marketing in one room. And then within digital marketing, maybe you have the beds. The beds would be like social media and online ad spins. Yeah. PR is a whole other room across the hall. You know? Mm-hmm. So you've got it's got its own place too you know which requires a different uh, approach right um because it's it's mainly centered around exposure awareness you know and it kind of ties in advertising and digital marketing which social media is a discipline of you know uh, digital marketing right. um, that type of thing you know yeah. so it's really if you if i had to describe it and just kind of sum it up it's the bridge between mm-hmm. everything, between all of it, between yeah. all the narr- the narratives, making sure everybody has the same consistent brand message across the board, and then shouting that out across the world. Right. And when people repeat it back, like the telephone game, everybody repeats back the same message. the same message yeah. back. Yeah. Right. And listen, Shay Brown is our guest today. We're on the Minding Your Business podcast. You all, I know you're getting great value. Uh, if you've got questions, make sure to post those in the comments. If you're on Facebook Live. Uh, whether you're on the Minding Your Business podcast or my own, uh, Ch- at Champ Ron, uh, and make sure that you do that. Shout out a few folks, uh, Keith Eddings, Orlando, Miss Cox. Uh, thank you so much. For the results. Yeah. So if you're going to give me that advice, 
has it worked for you? That's right. one of the first things I used to hear when I and worked that's what I, yeah, I see sometimes on, even on social media mm-hmm. is you see people that are, you know, they claim to be in public relations or they claim to be a social. It's just like the person that, um, you, know, you know, wants to run your social media and then you look and they don't use it. Yeah. Well, so it's not to say that you couldn't, but... You know, I, you know, I haven't seen any Thank kind you, of Yolanda. accountability or anything that suggests that you can do it because you don't do it for you. That's it. You know? And I've learned to stop doing that. I tested on myself first. Before yeah. I started doing anything, I started booking my own self on speaking engagements. I started fine-tuning my own pitches, all of that kind of stuff. And that's why I stayed in corporate America because I was like, man, look, do you really have the chops to learn this? Is yeah. it something that's made for you? Because so many people want to do things just to prove other people wrong. Make mm-hmm. sure it's your lane. Right. Make sure it's something you're passionate about and you're willing to study and be a and, and be a student of the game. Yeah. Make sure it's something that you want to actually business. You have to be able to stand your ground. You know what I yeah. mean? You you have to be doing it for the right reasons and for the right motives. Because man, after two years or a year, you'll be like, screw this. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you don't really want to do it, or if you're not purpose to do it, you yeah. know. So that's that's a big thing for me too, man. Like yeah, definitely. Definitely. You know, so let, let's shift gears just a little bit, Shay, because you, you, you've given us a great definition. So let's, let's talk about you know, something that's kind of in the news, which okay. is, um, of course, you had the, the whole Me Too movement. Mm-hmm. I, did, I actually did a podcast uh, last year after the whole Harvey Weinstein thing broke out mm-hmm. about the culture of sexual uh, harassment and things like that. You know, I wanted to get your take. You know, you've had the, in the NFL, you had the Reuben Foster. Yeah, situation. to what these women are saying and yeah. men right. when there's some legitimacy or if there's not. And I often tell people, unless you're in the industry, you don't really know. I have personally been the one who a lot of these A-listers who we see every day and cool people, they're married and so forth, been like, go and get her. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, but you're married. Is so-and-so come? I'm, I'm going to play. No, Shay, go and get her. I go tap on her, say so-and-so wants you to come to VIP. Right. She goes over. She goes. I'm like, you, <laughs> Dover. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and to being out there and they thinking you're going and you're not. And you're like, I ain't going. But when you put your foot down, a lot of them will be like, oh, you know, you yeah, think you do this, you do that. And they make a joke out of it and we move on. I've been in suites with a lot of these guys at LAX and nothing has ever happened. Not to say that, you know, I haven't ran into the right one that something could potentially could happen. But I right. make sure that I that I don't do things that could put myself in a very precarious situation. Mm-hmm. You know, I let everyone know where I'm going to be at all times. You know, there's usually, you know, several people in a meeting. I've met right. with a lot of NBA players. Sometimes it's been me and them and, you know. We kept teaching from the beginning on how to respect women, you know, how to, you know, make sure you're asking, you know, all the right questions. Well, and some yeah. of the best practices you gave earlier yeah. about, um, and, I, and I know this from just in management, in executive management of when you're having one-on-ones with people, and meeting and things like that to make sure that, like you say, doors prop, um, mm-hmm. that you've got multiple people, you've got witnesses, things like that. You're taking notes. You have a, you know, there's an accountability piece to visibility yeah. that then helps yeah. mitigate or eliminate they, a lot of Yeah, a lot of the situations. And it happens a lot in PR. You wouldn't yeah. believe it. I walk into a lot of meetings, even in Silicon Valley. I still have some of them calling me now. Why are you calling me? You got a whole wife. Right. You know? So... It's They'll go. Life. You will a whole <laughs> wife. They they try to flash their money at you because right. a lot of times they think I'm the assistant until they realize that you came to see me. Like right. they'll say, "Oh, I came to meet Shay and you know Shay Brown and she's so so and she's with such and such." And I'm like, "Did you not Google me before you came? Like, right. did you not see what I look like? Or yes. or you know, so that you would know it's me? Or um, are you able to go get me some coffee? No, I'm not. But I'll I'll have my assistant go get you some coffee. That's not what I do." You know, wow. I did a big conference, um, a banking disrupted conference in Silicon Valley. Yeah. And I remember them looking for the assistant. They were like, well, I need the assistant because I need, I have some things I need her to get out to set up the booth. And I'm thinking, okay, well, let me get her. Right. I'm the PR. Seeing how women of color have come forward and how we've been, oh, well, you know, you, I think she's lying. We're not giving the benefit of the doubt. You right. know, and they believe every single woman that comes forward. And I think we have to stop doing that in the court of public opinion and yeah. we have to see all the details because we're destroying people. Meanwhile, Charlie Sheen's admitted to out here spreading lemonades, and nobody's right. doing anything about it. So, I mean, there's... Yeah, a, I can't <laughs> believe the whole thing. The whole thing with Charlie Sheen, yeah. just, that just baffles me. Yeah. That's, that's, so that's crazy. So, you know, we're... I'm in a mixed bag, but yeah. I definitely reserve judgment until I hear it all. To hear all the facts, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, and that's just part of, right. you know, any kind of intelligent, uh, you know, kind of mindset. So, you know... I'll, I always ask this question of, you know, business leaders and and business owners, I think. You know, I think some of the worst days, I would have to culminate, is when you've done all you can do for a client and you went above and beyond. Yeah. And then they either don't want to pay you 
or they just feel like they can find someone because they have your strategy, they have your plans, they have kind of how you work in place, right. and they just say, I can find someone to do it cheaper. And I, I already know. I mean, I literally had a client that was a celebrity-owned tequila. It wasn't the celebrity that I had the issue with, but it was the company behind the tequila that pretty much told me, I can go get an intern now that I know what you do, how you do it, for $10 an hour. And I said, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's crazy. And, you know, at, at the time, they were paying me quite a bit. They were paying me like $13,000 a month to, to just do PR and, and, and digital. And then they were paying me per event. And we were doing three events per city. Right. And Deeper the Titans, this is one of my favorite movies, when he said, I run six plays, split biz like Novocaine. Give it time. Always works. See right. you on the bus. Right. He meant it. He meant it's in the execution. Exactly. You know, on how you do things. Um, and I think another thing is when you get in, in bed with bad people who don't have the the right intentions. I recently had a business partner who I had to let go. Yeah. Um, and we went our separate ways. We've been working together for two and a half years. She went back to London. You know, and all the workload for me and all this kind of stuff. And I had two clients that I think went with her. But I said they weren't for me because if you don't understand someone's loyalty to the person that they're partnered with, Right. They'll do the same thing to you. So everybody will be looking at each other with side eyes. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and exactly. I don't want any part of that mess. So, you know, the Lord just told me, he said, let it go. He said, "What when I shake the tree, what remains, that's who you're supposed to be connected to. And since she's left, I've gotten more opportunities. And mm. we're in the process of doing something really big with a television production. At some point, I'm going to be able to share. But right now, okay. I'm under an NDA. Gotcha. And, um, and it involves me and my brother. I need to learn it. You right. know, because you can't, you can't measure... Or manage what you can't measure. Right. And I didn't know whether what she was doing was deemed successful in that realm or not. Because guess what? I couldn't manage it because I didn't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. So now I've been forced to learn about it. Now right. I can manage it better. Yeah, you develop that expertise and that comfort level. Right. And, and now I can pitch those kind of deals that. on my own. Yeah. Her, so. And you can instill it in your team. So that's a big thing. So you're that's able, it. from the collaborative standpoint, and kind of building. Listen, Shay, thank you so much. So I really good. appreciate you deliver just a, you know a, a ton of value. I think today. Um, it, how can people get in touch with you? I know you, you deal in certain industries and things like yeah. that. But if they come across somebody or they happen to be in an industry that's a lane that you cover, okay. how can they get in touch with you? Well, the easiest way, um, I'll give you my Luxor email because it's shorter than the Royal Kingdom. Yeah. It's hello, H-E-L-L-O, at Luxor, L-U-X-O-R-E, media.com, or Shay, S-H-A-Y, at Luxor, L-U-X-O-R-E, media.com. Or you can um, contact me um, if you guys look online and get at the phone number at 901-800. Be applying. <laughs> Applied knowledge is best, yeah, man. So I'm there telling you. you. Go. So, <laughs> You know, don't feel like you're going to just use me and then, you know, right, right, you know right, right. you're not going to play like that. But listen, Shay, thank you so course, much. I really appreciate Ron, it. Ron, Ron's thank good you. people. You guys make sure you check out Brooks uh, Consulting. He's a great guy. I've shot all my professional videos and, and uh, ph- photography I shot at his place when he had it downtown. I'm telling you, he's a good guy, man. So you need to make sure that you're there and make sure that you get your children.